name is Jerwina Arnejo. I'm currently an instructor at the University of San Carlos. Let's have a quick review of what are the four fundamental operations. So um, you are very familiar of this one. You, we had this we, when we had in our elementary years. So first one, you have the addition. So when I say addition, it's the act of adding one or more things or we can also add numbers. So we have two parts of the addition. So you have the addends and you have the sums. So when we say the addends, it refers to the two or more numbers being added. And then sum, it's the result or it's the total of the um, addition process or operation. You are to add 126 and 82. So this are your addends and this is the total or we call that the sum. Next, um, second fundamental operation, we have the subtraction. So this is the inverse of addition. So when for addition, you're going to add up everything. For subtraction, you're taking something from another or you're taking away something from another. So we have here three parts. We have the minuend, the first number where the second number is subtracted from or it's where you will subtract. Then subtrahend is the number being subtracted. And then the difference is the result of subtraction or also known as the remainder in the when you have the division operation. So this one, this is the minuend where you will subtract. And then subtrahend, this is the number that you will subtract. And then this one, the resulting number is what we call the difference. Next, we have multiplication or it's the process of combining. Combining of matrices, vectors, or other quantities under specific rules to obtain a certain product. So we have here um, the parts of your multiplication. You have the factors or these are the numbers that can be multiplied together to get another number. That another number is the product or it's the result of your multiplication. Last fundamental, this is an example. So you have here 3 times 4, 3 and 4 are your factors of 12. 12 here is the product of multiplying 3 and 4. The last fun fundamental operation is the division or it's the um, operation splitting into equal parts or groups. So if subtraction is the um, opposite of addition, division is the inverse of your multiplication. So we have but uh, we have four parts for your division. We have the dividend, the numbers or the amount to be divided equally. You have the divisor or it's the number used to divide. And then you have the quotient, the result of your division. And then the remainder, it's what is being left. So as in the example, so you have here 75 is our dividend. This is the number that we are going to divide into nine equal parts which is 9 is our divisor and then 8 here this is the quotient and then 3 is the remainder from your when you um, divide 75 into 9 so you cannot get a, an exact or a whole number for that there is a remainder so or what is being left so that's for the four fundamental operations now let's go to the order of operations so what if all of this fundamental operations are being pre or are present in your equation. So we have a rule to follow. We call that the PEMDAS. So PEMDAS is an abbreviation. It's an abbreviation of P corresponds to parenthesis. E is for exponents. M is multiplication. D is for division. A for addition. And S for if everything is present. So we have to follow this sequence. So you operate First, the one inside the parenthesis. So, as in the example, so you have here four times open parenthesis, five plus three close parenthesis. And then, so the correct way of um, approaching this type of um, equation is to operate this one, five plus three, the one inside your parenthesis. The second, one that is being shown it's a wrong approach so what he or she did here is 
um, she multiplied 4 by 5 first and then it added to 3. So which is wrong, right? It will give you a wrong answer. So the first one would be the correct approach. So the answer would be 32. Next is after dealing um, the numbers or the operations inside the parentheses, you look for um, exponents if ever there is it is present. So it might be in, in the form of powers or in root, and say in a radical form, raised to a something or ra raised to a power of something. So you um, you do that first right after parenthesis. You do that next after parenthesis. So as in the example, so five times two raised to the power of two. So what you're going to do is to operate the one which is being expressed in exponent rather than the second approach. So this is a wrong approach. So you should operate two raised to the power of two first. Next, we have the multiplication and division. So you have a rule here that you have to uh, approach it from the left to the right. As in the example, 30 divided by 5 times 3. So since multiplication should come first, um, you do this one. So you do um, rather, yeah, it, since you will be using left to right approach, so you do 30 divided by 5, and then you get the product, you get the quotient for that, and then you multiply. So that way you will get uh, the correct answer, which is 18. And then the last one, you have um, a combination of addition and subtraction. So same with if multiplication and division is present, you also um, do it from left to right, as in the example. So since you have seen here a multiplication, so you do that first. You can also do grouping. Or when we say grouping, you use the parenthesis. Then you will get your, and then you follow the PEMDAS rule. Next, let's go to fractions. So we have three types of fractions. You have the proper, you have the improper, and you have the mixed fraction. So how do we know if it's proper, improper, or mixed? So when we say proper, so when you say proper fraction, so the the denominator is bigger than the numerator. If it's improper, it means that the numerator is bigger compared than the denominator. And then mixed fraction, you have the presence of your whole number and a proper fraction. So how do we how do we operate fractions? Um, for addition and subtraction with the same denominator, or we call that the proper fraction, you simply add or subtract the numerators and write the sum over the common denominator. As in the example, one fifth plus three fifth. So these two fractions or these two addends here are proper fractions. So you can just add the numerator and then copy the denominator. Now, if you have a different denominator, so we need to find the LCD. When you say LCD, it's the least common denominator and you have to rewrite them or rewrite it as similar fractions before adding or subtracting. So when you say similar, they should have the same denominator. So say for example, this is a subtraction. So one third minus one fifth. So they have different, they have different denominator. So the LCD here, you get a number that you can um, divide both three and four. Five. So that common denominator then is 15. So to change that into a similar fraction, so use this one, 15, change the denominator to 15, and then divide it by 3, you get 5, multiply it to the numerator. That's why you have 5 over 15. Do that to the other, or to your subtrahend. So 15 divided by 5, so that's 3 times 1 or times the numerator, that's why you have 3 over 15. So you have now um, written them in a similar fraction. 
So now you can subtract 5 minus 3, that would be 2, and then just copy the denominator, 2 over 15. Now, if you are multiplying two fractions, so hypothetically, if you are given this um, fraction, A over B times C over B, you simply um, multiply the numerator to the other numerator and denominator to the other denominator as well. And you will get this product, AC over PD, as in the example. So 4, 7 times 3 over 11. So if you're going to follow this rule, so 4 times 3 would be 12 over 7 times 11. So that will give you 77. So the resulting product would be 12 over 77. Now, if your fraction is not um, expressed in lowest term, you have to reduce it to lowest term using a common factor. But from the example I gave, 12 and 77 is already in its lowest term. Okay, so we can no longer look for a factor that we can, common factor that we can divide both 12 and 7, 77 rather. Right, so it is already in its lowest term. Now, for the division of two fractions, um, we have this, or I, I, I gave this uh, hypothetical um, equation. So if you have a fraction, so we have here our dividend, and that's A over B, and then our divisor is C over D. So what you're going to do is we're going to flip over our divisor. We get the reciprocal. We flip it or we call that the reciprocal and then we change division to multiplication and then apply the rule in multiplying of two sums. Okay, for example, 2 7 or 2 over 7 divided by 3 over 8. So if we are going to rewrite that, that would be 2 over 7 times this one, 3 over 8. We're going to flip it. We get the reciprocal of that, that would be 8 over 3. And then the resulting product would now be 16 over 20. Again, you need to reduce or you need to express your final answer in its lowest term. So the answer here is already in its lowest term, so no need to express it in that manner. So, after dealing with that um, fraction, we also have what we call the complex fractions. So, when you say complex fraction, so it's the combination of all fractions. So, you have addition and then we also have here the involvement of your variables. And then, um, it's usually multiplication. It's, it's the combination of the four fundamental operations in one. This time using a fraction or a more complicated fraction. So how do we approach that certain um, given? First one is we need to simplify the rational expression in the numerator, the original problem by adding or subtracting the fractions as necessary. So if they have different, um, if they have different denominators, so we need to express them into a similar fraction. Next is to simplify that rational expression okay, um, of in the denominator of the original problem by adding or subtracting the fractions as necessary. And step three, you need to rewrite the original problem with a newly found numerator and denominator. And then step four, after simplifying both the numerator and denominator, you need to um, should be left with a division problem. So again, to divide, we can use that um, rule. So you flip or you get the reciprocal of the denominator and write the new problem as a multiplication problem. Step five. So simplify the problem as necessary and remember to cancel out any factors. They must be exactly the same or that 
uh, if they are common in the numerator and denominator, you can cancel that out. Then we write any remaining factors that were not cancelled out and then do not actually do the multiplication. So let's have an example. So simplify 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 all over 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. This type of expression is an example of a complex fraction. So how do we solve this one by applying the applying the steps I have introduced in uh, in the previous slide? So technically, this is the numerator and this is our denominator. But in our in our numerator, you also have here a rational expression, or you have another sub fraction. So step one, we need to simplify our numerator so by expressing them into a similar fraction so we need to get the lcd of this two so that would be x plus one All right next you apply the um, rule when you express it using lcd and then expressing it into a similar fraction so that means x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 is just 1 okay times the numerator so that would be 1 minus the operation is fraction x so this is understood as 1 over 1 so x plus 1 divided by 1 would be x plus 1 times 1 so that would be x plus 1 can be more so you have now simplified your not yet uh, you have just expressed your um, numerator into a similar fraction next is the denominator same process also have the same lcd which is x plus 1 so that means x plus 1 divided by 1. So that would be x plus 1 times 1. x plus 1. Plus x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. So that's 1 times 1. Okay. Next, simplify your numerator. So that means 1 minus this one we need to distribute this um negative sign here so that would be one minus x minus one over for x plus one we have all over this one we need to simplify this one so that would be x plus two over x plus 1. So further simplifying it, so we can just cancel out 1 minus 1. So what remains is minus x over x plus 1. Over, you have here x plus 2 over x plus 1. So since this involves now your um, division. So we need to flip over your denominator. So now become negative x over x plus 1 times x plus 1 all over x plus 2. So since x plus 1 appears in the, denom in the denominator and numerator, we can cancel this one. That means the final answer for this complex fraction so the simplified form would be negative x over x plus 2.